Major funding for these programs is provided by HSH Nordbank and First American Title Insurance Company of New York, Perfect Building Maintenance, Allied Partners, Greenberg Traurig LP, The Moynian Group. Additional funding is provided by Ann Terry's Real Estate, Arbor Realty Trust, C.B. Richard Ellis, City Habitats, Cushman and Wakefield, Essex Capital Partners, Fremont Investment and Loan, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Must Development LLC, Newmark Knight Frank, Palin Enterprises, Rosenthal and Rosenthal Inc., Signature Bank, Stonehenge Partners, Swig Equities, The Engel Berman Group, The Wickoff Group, Titan Capital, YL Real Estate Developers. Welcome to Building New York. My name is Michael Stoller. You know, I've had people on my show who've been basically builders of New York, but today I have somebody who's a builder of New York and New Jersey and Pennsylvania. I got a guy who has a very interesting story. 57-year-old Steve Pazicki, chairman, founder, CEO, guru, uh, Chief Honcho of SJP Properties is a truly interesting story, and I'm happy to have you. Happy to have you today, Steve. Thank you very much, Michael. That's an a introduction which is going to be very tough to live up to. Uh, don't worry. I think it's not going to be difficult. So you're born in Perth Amboy? You know, I don't think people know where it is. I got New York maps. But <laughs> Perth Amboy, New Jersey? It's, uh, if it wasn't for the British messing up, it could have been. It's a better harbor than New York. Oh, okay. First uh, yacht club in the right. country. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I know you never knew what a yacht club was. So, so then you leave Perth Amboy and you move to Metuchen. Well, actually, um, at about age seven or eight, uh, we moved to Woodbridge um, into a house, and uh, you know, lived with uh, my. Brother and sister, and uh, yeah, but then you, you go to Saint Grammar School. You went Grammar to, School. I went to Saint James, and uh, and then you went to Saint Joe's, and I went to Saint Joe's, Joe's in the touch and, and and and, and see, and during grammar school and and during high school, uh, you were an entrepreneur. You had a couple of jobs. I always worked. It was always uh, understood in our family that you went out and worked, and uh, you came home and you gave your paycheck to your mother. And, and, and your was, brother Harry also went to St. Joe's. My brother Harry, he was, uh, he was the brilliant student. Um, you know. And you? I was uh, always working. Okay, you were always working. Always working. Okay, so, so now, now I, I, when I was reading about you, it said that uh, you were a, a good swimmer. And uh, you were a swimmer, uh, one of the predominant swimmers at the... And then you, you must have loved the Jersey Shore too, right? Loved the Jersey Shore as well, yeah. And you leave high school and you go where? Um, you know, I swam th in, into high school, and uh, and uh, I did. You know, worked in sports for my whole life. Um, and uh, Monmouth had a pretty good swim team, and it was on the beach, and it was a nice place. And my mother wanted me to go to college, so so, so you went there. So I went there. So that, okay, but in college you had some. I mean, I mean, you had no idea that you were going to be in real estate, even though you did some things. You you were caddying. In college, I was uh, I worked uh, twelve midnight to late in the morning at UPS. So you UPS loading trucks. You wore, uh, you wore the brown jackets. Uh, they didn't even have brown jackets back then for us. We were in the training college training program, um, and uh, I I did a lot of roofing, a lot of construction type jobs. Always was fascinated by the planning and the uh, development of of anything from residential to commercial. It was always in intriguing to me, and you. Okay, you graduate, you're 23 years of age, and you told me the other day that basically you had a lot of resumes, and you walk in the streets, right? Walking door to door. Walking door to door. Needed a job that day. And what happens? And I was fortunate to um, 
You know, I, I was intrigued by the real estate business uh, since I was very young. I was uh, intrigued by the development and construction process. And, and your dad wasn't in the business, and you, you had no relatives in the in, in the real estate business. Um, you know, my dad was a residential broker, oh. um, who uh, you know after you know World War II is the 82nd Airborne, and uh, and he worked in factories, and after a while started selling houses. But he never developed the house. He was a salesman. He was a salesman, and um, so I uh, I always found it intriguing. Um, figured I'd uh, try to get close to uh, the apex of uh, of real estate and investment. And so they let you come to New York. Let me come to New. Took the train into New York, and um, handed out resumes from downtown to midtown for about three days, and got an opportunity to. Uh, be in Metropolitan Life's, not their mortgage department, but their workout department. And, and you sat two cubicles away from Jimmy Kuhn, president of Newmark Newmark Life Frey. That's correct. Okay, so, you know, so, yeah. and, and Jimmy and you, I think he's maybe a year older than you, so. I think he's a year or two older than me, and, uh, you know, it was a, it, MetLife was a good training experience. Uh, <clears throat> the education was real important, you know, taking the courses and, uh, the workouts were fascinating because you got to see everything that went wrong with the transaction. So, so then you said, hey, one life insurance company, it's time to go to another one. Uh, but this time you go to Jersey, right? You go to Prudential? No, actually this time uh, after, uh, Equitable was starting okay, a, Equitable. an area that uh, was basically investing pension money in real estate, in joint ventures. Still in New York City. In New York City, uh, on 6th Avenue. Um, and got an opportunity to work for George Peacock, who was a brilliant man, and uh, learned a tremendous amount from, from him. And, and what did this guy Pizicki, this, this Polish kid, do for uh, the Equitable now? Well, and I it started, it was a very, very small department. Actually, every, there was probably 200 or 300 people in the mortgage department, and the equity department probably had three people. So with that small crew, uh, I wound up running most of the new business west of the Mississippi River, and got to meet with developers uh, that were doing, you know, hotels, office, you know, the California was booming back in the, this is the late 70s, and um, Hawaii was booming with hotels, and Texas was uh, growing like crazy, so got a great cross-section, got to spend a lot of time with development companies and, and understand how they set up and organize and it was something that was uh, very interesting to me. Then Equitable says, we're leaving New York, we're going to Atlanta. Oh. And what does Pizicki say? I got all my family and friends and uh, we're in the metropolitan area and uh, you know, I, didn't, I, I didn't feel I wanted to you know, move to Atlanta. So I uh, got back the resumes and uh, you know, looked at a couple places. I, uh, I thought I could improve, uh, you know, the financial uh, ve vehicles and, and, and institutions that uh, a, a number of the big developers were, uh, were, had relationships with. I got an opportunity to work with Lincoln Property Company as their uh, finance partner in New York City, set up an office to open up some more uh, avenues for them to do business. They needed about a billion and a half at least in fresh cash a year and their relationships were with Met and Aetna. And uh, I told Mac Pogue that, um, you know, if one of those guys closes their window, you know, we're hardly going to be able to raise a billion, no less uh, that much more. And we were able to open up uh, relationships with uh, several major institutions for Lincoln, uh, and it broadened their base of uh, and investors. What, and what type of deals were you doing for Lincoln at this time? I was doing. I mean, you were the regional guy in New I, York. I was the regional guy in New York, and my job was to finance all commercial projects from Dallas to Chicago and East. So the opposite side of the country. I worked for Equitable. I now started working for Lincoln, but out of the New York office. So we looked at the projects, put packages together, went and saw you know the best financing we could achieve for them, and. Uh, it was a real good experience. And then uh, that was going very well, and uh, I think we, we completed our assignment for, for Lincoln at that point, and uh, I asked to be development partner in the metropolitan area. Uh, they had lost their development partner years earlier in the metropolitan area, and uh, they were willing to let me do it. 
So what, 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 what was the role, and what do you do as a development partner with them? As a development partner, you, you know, you, you set up your, you really, Lincoln was a, a franchise, it was an opportunity really to provide financing for you, and, and, a, and a, a, a balance sheet, which I obviously didn't have. Um, and set up an organization. Uh, my first property was Mars Corporate Center in Persephone, about a 130 acre track. Uh, with development capacity of about a million eight feet, but no tenants. Thousand feet. Spec. Spec. Speculative. Started the first. As one would say, uh, you have a lot of chutzpah. We would say in some of the or balls to do this. You know, uh, a little yeah. speculative business. At this point in time, I was about 32 years old, and uh, you know, didn't have uh, didn't have anything to lose. Uh, so we went ahead and uh, spec'd. Uh, Two half a million square, uh, two two hundred fifty thousand foot buildings. And how the, how they work out? It was the largest spec transaction <clears throat> in New Jersey to that date. Nobody, I think, has had specced even two hundred and fifty thousand feet, no less five hundred thousand feet at once. And uh, we were eighty eight percent leased uh, before we completed construction, and uh, it was a fabulous transaction, and. Uh, you know, the planning process and the development process uh, was intriguing to me. Um, it was at the intersection of Route 80 and 287, so from a regional plan uh, situation, that's what the state wanted to see. And, um, you know, it's probably one of the largest, uh, most successful office parks in the state of New Jersey today. Do you still own that or that one still you sold? Own, we still own some of it. We've sold buildings. Uh, we sold Morris Corporate Center 1 and 2, the half a million square feet. Um, twice. Tell us about the first time, because when we okay. got met the other day, you said it was a nice little profit for a short period of time. For a first project... Um, at 32 years of age also. At 32 years of age, um, it, was, uh, it was a very successful project. Um, we received, uh, you know, substantial offers for the project. Um, Lincoln Property Company uh, wasn't a seller, but you know, back in the, uh, I guess this was very early 80s. Tax uh, shelter boys, everybody was buying. Everybody was buying. The uh, cap rates were compressed. We didn't see cap rate compression like we do today, but we certainly you know, saw cap rates uh, probably get under nine, and for us that was spectacular territory. Um, so we, we uh, I called, uh, down to Dallas and told them that uh, you know we'd gotten some offers and we might be able to make as much as thirty million dollars on the project. Always conservative. That was my institutional background. Um, they said if you could make thirty million dollars, you could sell this today. So um, uh, we got together with uh, JMB in Chicago, and uh, they were very anxious to uh, you know buy an asset like that. Uh, it was a nice. Uh, and they were granite buildings, the first granite buildings in the state of New Jersey. They nice for the book when they sold it very, to, the, to very the investors. Nice, very nice. Good pictures, you know, good, nice pictures. Very, very seductive pictures. So, uh, and they paid us $55 million in profit. Uh, so it was a. This is not bad for, not, the, for the the paper boy, you know, the, the, the shingle. He made a couple of dollars on that deal. Boring guy, just worked all his life. Yeah, so. And it work was ethic was important. Um, you know, at that time the organization was small, but uh, you know worked very hard. The so bulk of that organization that we formed at that time is still with us. That's something so, so I'm very when proud do, of. So when do you leave um, Lincoln and create SJP? I know it was Lincoln Property Corp, so it was LPC. LPC. And so and now you created SJP, and I don't know why SJP, but it sounds like that's Stephen J. Pizzecki. These are the two, you know, being on your show and, and naming the company after my three initials were two of the most arrogant things I've ever done in my oh, life. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so tell us, okay, Pizzecki leaves Lincoln. Basically, you are Lincoln over here. Well, SJP was S the same SJP thing. was Lincoln. You know, we had our, the only, the only thing uh, in really 88, Lincoln was overextended substantially. They were about to go into a, a major collateral pool, which is a workout uh, of massive scale. Um, we were not in that collateral pool. My partnership documents were different than the average partner in that I didn't have to so, contribute so, to the collateral pool. So the, pool. Ne the first project that S the new entity, the SJP, was you go back not too far from where your roots, okay? Correct. Woodbridge 
and you go to Woodbridge and you build them. What? The, sec the second project we did was we did a, a corporate headquarters of 280,000 feet for Engelhart uh, Minerals and Chemicals. And um, we had a number of projects at that point in time under construction or about to be under construction. And in 88, with Lincoln having the issues they had, it was hurting my ability to get financing. So our banks uh, told us that you know we would be better off if we just dropped the Lincoln name and did it ourselves. You know they were they've seen they saw what we could do as an organization and team, and they felt very comfortable with you know a segregated credit that was SJP properties as opposed to having any chance to get into that big pool. Right. Big pool was scary. So at that point in time, um, we said to Lincoln, look. I've got three or four projects going. You don't have any money in them. You can't really, you know, come up with it. You're in a tough position. Uh, I had a third interest. They had two thirds, and I said we'd be, I'd be glad to finish these projects. You know, d doing everything ourselves, including you know signing on the dotted line and uh, and putting our equity in, and um, we'd be willing to split the you know split the profits a third, two thirds, and after that we're. We're, we're basically gone and start our, our separate company. It was kind of inevitable given the state of facts and uh, we were able to start our company and, uh, and, uh, and do quite well. And you know, going through your brochure, I mean, it looks like granite is your favorite color or you know, something like that. Uh, you have beautiful properties over there. But most of them were in Morris County, you know, Monmouth County, other counties and then how how do you get to go to Jersey City to to be in a Colgate building, a toothpaste place? What do you what do you, what do you do in Jersey City? Well, you know it. You know we. Um, I'm on New Jersey Futures board. They're a planning group. I've always been interested in planning. Um, certainly the you know the sprawl that has existed in uh, in not only New Jersey but the rest of the country was something that I didn't want to contribute to. Um, our, my focus from the time I was a kid was to build a building that is the best building that could be built for the town, for the uh, tenant, for the investors, and uh, and you know make sure it's as uh, as as architecturally significant as I could do given the economics of the specific location. So tell my audience about the Colgate building. So the city, you know, the cities, the inner cities were, you know, that's where the planning uh, and the infrastructure was, and that's where the uh, that's where the regional planning people certainly wanted you to be. Uh, so we went into Jersey City and we bought the Colgate Building, uh, which at that time was a 95 Green Street, about a 350,000 foot building that uh, was basically a, a vertical warehouse, a toothpaste factory. Um, didn't have any utilities. The utilities were strung from one side of the street to the other in another building. Didn't you know? So we put we cut elevators in the center of the floor, put in all all uh, mechanical electrical plumbing, uh, redid the facade, the windows. Merrill Lynch leased the entire building, and they're still a, a happy tenant there, and we're happy to have them and have a great relationship with them. And then you uh, know, I think it was you or somebody in one of your articles saying that uh, Hoboken was like the Barbary Coast of the 1950s? Is that a quote you may have well, said once? Hoboken was, is a very, you know, it's got a great history, uh, from the Dutch to the uh, wharfs to the, uh, to the Frank Sinatra days. Uh, you know, it, uh, where our project is developed, which was uh, a, a development that uh, was, was owned by the Port Authority and the city always had an interest of Hoboken had an interest and so we ground leased uh, the property from the port and the city. Um, and uh, and you built this right after 9-11, uh, right? We built uh, spec. Yes, this we, was a spec, another yeah. spec. 9-11, uh, you know, people were a little worried about the real estate business in, yes. in the country, especially in New York, New Jersey area. Fortunately, to be honest with you, Michael, we, uh, the first phase was uh, 550,000 feet, and it really was started in about the late 90s, 97. So we were, we were before 9-11. Okay, before. The second building, um, uh, half a million feet, was built uh, 
after 9-11. And what what you build in Hoboken? We built uh, a million one of office and 75,000 feet of ground floor retail. And we have another phase of 550,000 feet on Block B, which we're uh, getting ready to start uh, probably in the next couple months. And you got a Wolfgang Puck Cafe, I, I, I read that. <clears throat> Hoboken is a fabulous town. Yeah. All retail is successful because of the density and uh, the affluence of the young people in town. Um, it's the major transportation hub for the waterfront and uh, you know, very, very attractive place. So now, all of a sudden, it's 2004. Pazicki, who hasn't been working in New York since his Lincoln property days, Correct. okay, uh, they allow you, I know, once in a while from wherever you live in Jersey to come across state lines. You decide to buy the Sheridan Russell Hotel on 37th Street? What were you gonna do with the Sheridan Russell Hotel? You couldn't build an office building. Well, the, um, in um, 02, you know, we were, we were tired of the cycles in the office business. They were very difficult. Um, and uh, not that we didn't have good times and be in a private company, we just didn't build during the bad times. But those cycles could last eight to 10 years of downtime. So, you know, it, for a Polish guy, it took me a while to figure out I need to be in another product line. Oh, don't give me this ball. So we, uh, I, I got together with Alan Goldman, uh, and, you know, guy who'd been steeped in uh, residential uh, flat plate construction, high-rise construction. And uh, in, in 04, we bought the Sheridan Russell, and uh, we took it down and uh, put a 21-story building, which is topped out and probably will finish in November. I passed it today. It looks great. Thank it you. really, it, yeah. it, 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 it really looks. It's the right type of building for that street. I mean, because of the brick, you know, the way it is, as opposed to these glass facades, you know, the glass curtain wall. It really looks like a. Well, if you, you know, you got to make it fit in its environment. We always, you know, we're we're proud of the building. Uh, it's a great little building. Um, it will it. It's got uh, you know tremendous uh, apartments and uh, you know they're. The views are great. The terraces are great. The infrastructure amenities are fabulous, um, and it's it's a good it's a it's a good the right product for that location. So, I know you you know the, the Polish kid wants to be on Park Avenue. What you, you want to go back to McCann's Bar, uh, and then you go on Forty Sixth Street. You find another property that you want to do another thing. What are you doing yeah. on Forty Sixth Street? The <clears throat> Platinum, they call it. Well, the, uh, my partner, you know, he's in his mid-60s and he's having fun with it. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's uh, done very, very well. Uh, the Park Avenue complex is, uh, we're probably 75% sold out already. Uh, Platinum, he opened the sales office about four weeks ago and he's sold 80 units already. That's great. Uh, we're and that's very, on 46th Street and 8th Avenue. 46th and 8th Avenue. Uh, you know, amenity package is tremendous. You never have to leave the building. Um, but it, it's a fantastic building geared to Times Square. We're, we're very enamored with uh, Times Square yeah, and I what's happening. I think happened you like there. Times Square. We what Times happens, Square. I mean, the Milsteins owned this property for years. It was a parking lot. You know, it was on 42nd Street and 8th Avenue, across the street from the Port Authority. What does Pazicki do? What do you do last year? I mean, you're building, I, I know the Jersey marketplace is a little tough. You're building a one point three billion dollar square million building on Times Square. What are you building? Tell yeah. my audience. We're um, you know we've we've always looked at uh, the metropolitan areas our market. Uh, you know I, I, I during my institutional days I saw a lot of major development companies jumping around the country and jumping around the world for that matter, and uh, it wasn't a great experience for them. And I really believe that you you know. First of all, the, the metropolitan area is an enormous real estate market, uh, both residentially and commercially. And uh, you know, we've, we've always studied the New York market as well as the Pennsylvania market, and we keep current on, on all the markets. Uh, we have a pretty big research group uh, in, our, in our small so, company. So tell me what you're building on 42nd Street for and my we, audience. We really see the office market right now needing a, a small product. Uh, the, Unfortunately, New York has, you know, got a very old, tired uh, uh, commercial office base. You know, probably 50 to 60 percent of it is is somewhat functionally obsolete for the tenants' needs today. 
Um, so uh, we're building a 1.1 million square foot office building with 55,000 feet of ground floor retail, um, just north of the new New York Times building, which they're moving in uh, this week, and we will start construction next week. So it, it's very exciting. We've uh, we worked around the clock to you know get our drawings and be able to be in this market and buy the job. We're very excited about the uh, the subcontractors that we've gotten together with. They're the uh, clearly they're the, the cream uh, of the industry. Yeah. Cream of the industry, and uh, certainly the uh, the people that get less uh, accolades and credit. Uh, you know, the developers always so, got. So, so now Paziki's going to have a, a residential in New York City, a Class A top office building in New York City, retail with entertainment venues, and you can be in the signage business, right? That's correct. And then I read that you're also going to be building in Glassbury, uh, Pillsbury, uh, Glassbury, New Jersey, building Pete town Gladstone. Uh, Pete Pat Gladstone. Right, you're it building townhouses over there. Correct. But you know, one thing that you've done, which is really great, is you've given back. I mean, I read an article about on um, one of your campuses, maybe the Morris County campus, uh, one of your guys, you helped a group with a cancer group and gave them a building for five years, which you probably give it to them for life. What is that? The community facility? You know, I think that uh, you know we've we've been successful. Um, you know, wherever we develop, we want to give back to the community. Um, it's something that. Uh, is, is certainly very pleasurable, uh, and uh, this cancer care group needed a building, uh, needed it to be visible, and, and we had a building, and uh, so we leased it to them for zero rent uh, for yeah. 10 years, I think. Right. And, and then Pizicki, who, I don't as you said to me when we met, may have been at Monmouth once in a while for the classes, you graduated, uh, you create the Stephen Jay and Elaine Pizicki endowed chair at the Real Estate Institute? Well, the, uh, you know, the, the state is surely needed uh, education in the real estate business. Uh, it's got an enormous real estate community and uh, really not a great place to uh, you know, get the classes immediately. Um, it fostered Monmouth starting a real estate program, which now they have an undergraduate and graduate program. A number of the undergraduate and graduate classes are given throughout the state, including Newark and uh, CB's office up in uh, Saddlebrook. So uh, it's given young people opportunity to, to you know, really understand uh, some things early in their career. And, and then you went back even better. You went back with your brother. You know, you were you and your brother were honored a number of years ago at your high school at St. Joe's, and you created another scholarship over there. Well, we um, endowed something. Yeah, we expanded the school by 7,000 feet. We added a gymnasium and a library, a media center, and uh, uh, bi biology and chemistry labs. So, so, so Mr. Pizicki, I'm telling you, I have, I've had builders of New York, but I, today I've had a builder of New York, New Jersey, and I'm happy that you're in the Big Apple today and doing business, and I really appreciate that you've been my guest. Thanks again, Steve. Michael, Pizzicchi. thank you for having me on. Very nice of you. Major funding for these programs is provided by HSH Nordbank and First American Title Insurance Company of New York, Perfect Building Maintenance, Allied Partners, Greenberg Traurig LP, The Moynian Group. Additional funding is provided by Ann Terry's Real Estate, Arbor Realty Trust, C.B. Richard Ellis, City Habitats, Cushman and Wakefield, Essex Capital Partners, Fremont Investment and Loan, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Must Development LLC, Newmark Knight Frank, Palin Enterprises, Rosenthal and Rosenthal Inc., Signature Bank, Stonehenge Partners, Swig Equities, The Engel Berman Group, The Wickoff Group, Titan Capital, YL Real Estate Developers.